it's Jess and Mel and welcome to Mel Reads The Cursed Child. Woohoo! Yay! Hooray! Oh sorry my fangirls are here again cheering me on, you know. Jesus take the wheel of my life. Or Buckbeak take the wheel of my life. Whichever is more qualified. (laughs) So just before we dive in, I think we owe our lovely fans an apology for how up and down it's been lately. We're very, very sorry, but technology hates us. Yeah, I'm thinking of going on strike until I can become a wizard and uh, have (laughs) magical recordings. That's something I've always wondered about. How do they, how do they do magic? Magic, of course, it's magic. Their magical radio. Yeah, exactly. I was wondering about that the other day. Oh, you, you're breaking up a bit. Oh, no. I don't if know you want, why. Maybe speak a bit louder. <laughs> I... That, that helps. I think shouting helps every situation. Uh, unfortunately, I can't always shout um, because I have so many other people in close proximity, but I'll do my best to be as loud as possible. Um... <laughs> but yes, anyway, technology hates us, but here we are persevering. For the love of you guys. It's all for you. Is it? Well, no, it's to stroke my ego, but that's a whole different topic. Oh, God, let's not go there. Anyways, let's move on. As some of y'all know, I gave I gave Mel a huge chunk of reading to do this week. Um, she's going to review it. It's going to be amazing. I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of tired. <laughs> So do forgive me if I'm a bit giant squiddish for this. (laughs) Right, well, shall we dive in with Act 2, Scene 8? Get it? Dive in? I'm the giant squid? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dub best. Okay, yes, yes. We're ready. We're We're punny. (laughs) Um, so, Albus is in the hospital wing. And so Harry gets some truth dropped on him by the other Albus, the better Albus, the Boom. Albus Percival Wolfric Brian Dumbledore. Dumbledore be dropping and, mad truth bombs left, right, and center. Yeah, in an alternate universe. Da, 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 da. It, it, I, because because it'd been like a week since I'd read the other thing, the other scenes. When I started reading this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot, and I was just like, what's going, oh, right, right, alternate universe, now they changed the past. They did, they did, that is true. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Dumbledore's dropping some truth bombs, but, I don't know, it feels kind of forced, they're like going, look how wise Dumbledore is, but they're not actually being wise, because they're not rolling. Ooh. But, yeah, Dumbledore's like, maybe your son's waiting for you to see him clearly, um, and apparently people at the ministry are concerned about Harry and Albus and how they're struggling to relate. And I'm like, I didn't know work colleagues got that involved. I've never had a work colleague get so involved in my life that they talk about concerns they have about my relationships. Really? <laughs> Maybe I work in a better industry. But no, I'm a public I work in a ser- great I, industry. I, I'm, people I'm ask a public me, servant. <laughs> So it was Harry, and, uh, kind of. That's what I'm saying. We just I, go about our business. Apparently not, but I guess he is also Harry Potter, and that kind of stuff would be fairly well known. And it's not like Albus hides it at school, emo child. He probably walks around with eyeliner and blasting Evanescence over an old Sony Walkman. And and does he call himself an Obi? Is that where we're going? You know, maybe he does, and maybe you shouldn't judge him because he's just going through a phase. But anyway, so Dumbledore gives like some cryptic advice and clues, and then's like, "But I am but paint and memory, Harry, paint and memory, and I never had a son." You should see what my hands are doing. I don't want to know what they're doing in reference to that line. Painted memory. Oh, okay then. Never mind. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> so, turns out that in this alternate universe, Albus was sorted into Gryffindor. 
but him and Scorpius are still besties. <gasps> besties. See, that's Ooh. true friendship. Oh, oops. That's true friendship. When you can be besties despite alternate universes. And, yeah, pretty much. Um, so, then Ron married Padma. And they've got a son. What do they call their son? Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I, I skipped a scene. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Albus and Scorpius are still besties. And, um... Sorry, <laughs> Albus and Scorpius are still besties, but Harry's like, you can't hang out with him anymore. He's dangerous. Brow. And then Albus like, but he's my best friend. Oh no, best friends. That is the actual worst. Yeah. Um. And he's like, I'm gonna hang out with Scorpius anyway. And Harry's like, No, you're not. I'm gonna give the Marauders back to McGonagall and McGonagall. McGonagall. Ooh, what is a going? McGonagall is going to uh, monitor him. So it's we're getting to like a nanny. We're getting to nanny cam and everything now. That's nanny kind of apparent cam. Harry is in this adult universe. Nanny cam, GPS tracking on his child. Actually, he will know where his child is. Do you think a nanny cam would just be like an, an unsuspicious portrait or something? Yes. Something like that? What would a wizarding nanny cam look like? Because that's, that's, that's immediately what I imagine. That's a question for our fans. They should tell us what they think a uh, wizarding nanny cam would be. But I'm liking your idea so far. That or like a really weird house elf or a really non-suspect toy that's got like a wizard camera. Yeah, it's a, it's a loaded question. It's a loaded question. Okay, yeah, back, to, d- back to the actual nanny state though. Don't let me detract with my nanny cam ideas and questions. No, but I like this conversation. I'm just now thinking about it. We could totally have this on a, as a topic next season. Parenting in the wizarding world. Parenting devices and contraptions. Spying in the wizarding world. <laughs> oh, this would be great. Anyways, fine. So, in the next scene, um, after Harry has gone all whatever the word is on Albus, saying this was going to be, um, oh, well, by the way, sorry, Harry's last lines in that scene, it's like, it's only now I realise that I don't need you to like me. I need you to obey me because I'm your dad and I do know better. I'm sorry, Albus, it has to be this way. Oh, shut up, Harry. <sighs> you don't know, you don't know anything. You don't, you don't even go here. <laughs> but he, well, he did. He went there. He did he go went there, there previously. But yeah, no, um... Harry is being like captain of the douchebag patrol. <laughs> but um yeah, so they're going to see nine and Albus is like, Well, I'll just run away and again and Harry's like, No you won't and uh I was like, I will and I'll make sure Uncle Ron can't find us and then Ron appears. And apparently think Dumbledore is a phrase. I think actually this has come up before. But I, I don't like that. Thank Dumbledore, you're okay. Oh, it makes me want to, uh, like, like brown punch. babies. No, it just makes me want to punch someone in the stomach. <laughs> like, I just want to turn so around. Violent. And, I am, but that's not the point of the conversation. It literally just makes me want to turn around and punch someone in the stomach. Probably the person who said it, because taking out my rage on anybody else would be viciously unfair. Mm. Um. Turns out, in this alternate universe, Ron doesn't run a joke shop, and uh, he got a set of quills as a gift for Albus. Like, just normal quills. Some nice quills. And, um... Yeah. Anyways, so, Ron... We're learning that Ron is, like, you know, boring as fuck, and is just as badly written as Weird Ron. Weird um, anyway, Ron. so Harry, Harry uh, and Ron leave as Scorpius turns up, and I, I'm sure um, there's a look that was. Uh, 
Wait, 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 wait. Do, 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 do. <laughs> um, so yeah, Albus like pushes Scorpius away. I'm sure there would have been a look between Harry and Albus as Harry left to say, you know, break his heart. I imagine he was like his villain. Oh, no. Um, so Albus is like, well, we failed with the time turner, so see you, Scorpius. Bye. Ooh. Well, he's more like we're better off without each other, and Scorpius is left looking after him. Heartbroken. Oh, heartbreaking. So, um, scene 10 is in McGonagall's office, and she is full of unhappiness. Harry is full of purpose, and Ginny's not sure what she's supposed to be. (laughs) But yeah, it's Harry explains the map to McGonagall and pretty much is like, you watch my son, and if him and Scorpius are anywhere near each other on the map, uh, you come running and separate them and tell me and, like, just keep them away apart. Make sure my son is only at class or in the common room. So awful. So awful. Mm. Parenting um, done wrong. Yeah, really done wrong. And he's, like, to um, McGonagall, if you don't do as I tell you, I'll use the full force of the ministry on you. And do you understand me? Oh my gosh, you can't say that, yeah. Harry. I'm just... It's, I can't believe, like, McGonagall took that shit. Like, I would have expected, like, you know, she would have been like, excuse me, Harry Potter? I would expect Did her to go get, Did you say that to get, me like, with a, her, like... Yeah, I would expect her to go get a branch from the Whomping Willow and be like, hold still, I'm about to whoop you. No, no, she doesn't. McGonagall has more power than that. Like, she took down Umbridge with her words constantly. Yeah, but, like, I can just imagine her with, like, a branch from the Whomping Willow. Like, I'm about to... I'm about to wreck you, Harry James Potter. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so that was that scene. Um, scene 11, we learn that Hermione, since she didn't marry Ron, became, like, a sadistic defence against the dark arts teacher. What makes her sadistic, I wonder? I don't know, but it's what so is that? sad and creepy. She's like, lo- it's like losing patience now. Ten points from Gryffindor for stupidity. Who does she sound like? And then uh, Albus is like, but you're not this mean. And Hermione's like, and that's 20 points to assure Albus Potter that I am this mean. She's kind of like Umbridge, but not a sweet seat. Umbridge at least acted sickly sweet. Hermione's just being, like, flat out. I mean, she's being a little bit Snape-ish. Yeah. I suppose she's not smooth as Snape. That's probably what threw me off. He was pretty smooth. Snape Snape was, like, liquid... No, what was it? Chocolate melted caramel or something. Sorry, Um, Shades of Grey, which I've never read. Okay, you know what? There's no bits. I need you to make me a promise right now, and it is that, number one, you will never describe Snape with anything from Fifty Shades of Grey ever again, (laughs) and number two, you won't compare Snape to chocolate ever again. (laughs) I can make no promises. I'm gonna need you to make that promise. I can't. (laughs) Please, dear listeners, help send adults no one needs that no adults i hate adults okay well that's a lie but anyways all right back to back to her adults having are a always moment. if harry potter told me if harry potter told me anything it's the adults are always wrong i i would not say that, that is the <laughs> i think ideal. i misinterpreted the story i think you did and that is not the ideal lesson to take away from harry potter <laughs> You can't tell me what to do. Yes, I um, can. Just not effectively. So, like, yeah, and Albus is all like to Hermione, you're being ridiculous, where's Rose? And Hermione's like, who's Rose, your invisible friend? Oh, she is harsh. Yeah. Um, And then she takes 50 points from Gryffindor because Albus is like, Rose Granger Weasley, your daughter, of course. Because you and Ron aren't married, Rose... Yep. So. 
that's cool. Awkward. Awkward. So we go into scene 12, um, which <laughs> I know is, like, probably really sad music, and it's Albus and Scorpius pretty much walking around and missing each other on these uh, st- st- the staircases. But all mm-hmm. I imagine, I can't remember what the music called, but we see people running through various doors and missing each other. Yep. You know what I'm talking about. I know what you But mean. that music, I can't think of what the music's called. But that's what I was thinking. I'm like, this is going to be really sad, but like it seems them right through various doors and missing each other. No, I know exactly what you mean. I can I can see the scene in my head. But yeah, literally all this scene was is them on staircases looking at each other longingly. So long. Missing each other and then catching each other and looking at each other longingly. There is so fan fiction about these two, I can feel it. <laughs> I bet you can. <laughs> Mel's pervy radar's going and Mel will not look that up because Please, Mel no. should need that in her life. And but I Mel will plant it all into life. our listeners' heads. Ooh. Not about that life. Yeah, not about that life. Now, when what we're saying here, we're just not about weird fan fiction pairings. We are not against anything just, else. Just, they're underage. So it's, it's not a weird fan fiction pairing. It's not, it's, it's not even weird fanfiction parents, it's how people write it that we're kind of against but not. We, I'm a, I'm a masochist, so I will go and look for these things and then moan and bitch about how horrible and traumatising it all was. And once I'm like slightly recovered from the trauma, I'll go in again. We're really going to have to like record some episodes of Witch Weekly after hours because we've clearly got some real topics to cover, I think. But I, I just I just don't want to... Let's just keep them innocent little pygmy puffs and well, let's carry uh, on. Uh, um, our email that I'm going to touch on later has told us that we are not family friendly, that the Kitty Lee Winks aren't allowed to listen to us. Sorry. <laughs> hey, kids. So, uh, don't do drugs. There we go. I helped. Don't do drugs, stay in school. We are contributing to the youth of the world. Yes, go team. But no. Part of, part of me just thinks we can't, shouldn't even bother with After Hours. We should just rate some episodes explicit and go all for it. Oh yeah, even better. Yeah, who needs a, who needs a second stream? Alright, carry on, carry on. Back to, back to staircases. Scene and... 13. Dun, 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 dun. Um... So, Ginny and Harry are having a bit of a talk, and then Draco sweeps in dramatically and is like, Flounce. why won't you let our kids hang out? And Harry's like, because because Payne told me um, that he sends darkness around my son, near my son. It's like, a centaur told you this. Like, I wanted, I wanted Draco to be like, you're listening to an effing centaur? Really? Really, Harry? Dude, dude really? centaurs are apparently big deals in this world. And then, um, Harry's all like, hey, Draco, Scorpius, even your son, are you sure? Huh? Huh? Douchebag. And, um, yeah. And then they have a wand fight. I was really hoping they'll have a physical fight. That would be ideal. I really... I really just thought that would be funny. And it's more emotional to physically grab onto someone and fight. And then, um, sorry, Draco does kind of have, like, the little best thing here. He's like, keep up, old man. And Harry's like, we're the same age. And Draco's like, I wear it better. Ooh, shady. But, yeah, it's pretty much just a, a, a duel. And then Ginny comes and breaks them up. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, lordy lord. They just fight. It, it's, it's like just a scene to break up, break up everything else, I suppose. Honestly, I love it whenever and these two then... fight, though. Sorry? I love it whenever those two fight. It's ideal. Okay. Yeah. I love their rivalry. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Kind of like, okay. All right, can, can we adult yet? 
Further, uh, continue going, keep going. I threw you off. Scene 14. Um, so Delphi has snuck into Hogwarts and is so, has sought out Scorpius and is all like, you know, what are we doing? We didn't save Cedric, so, you know. Um, and, you know, they've wrecked him. And Delphi's just like, um, sorry, their conversation project, look, we've wrecked everything, but we can fix, well, Delphi's like, you can fix it. And he's like, uh, Albus and I are friends. And she's like, oh, yes, you are. Go, go talk to him and you guys will be fine. And that's pretty much it. So Delphi's like, Albus needs you, Scorpius. Sorry, Albus needs you, Scorpius. And that's a wonderful thing. And Scorpius like, what does he need me for? And she's just like, you don't know what he needs. That's the funny thing about friendship. But you know he needs you. Find him. You two belong together. And part of me is like, actually, they belong together much more than you belong with Albus, you weird pedo who kissed him. Yeah, it's still a bit I weird. Don't, I really don't like Delphi. I just hope she gets better. Mm, no. Like, I've learned characters don't get better in this. <laughs> I've been saying that about Ron for an entire act and a half now. You have been saying that about Ron, and it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future. Well, they can't run him for shit, so I don't think he gets better. Okay. Um, scene 15. So we're back in the Potter's kitchen, and Ginny has broken up the fight between Draco and Harry. So now they're sitting as far apart as they can. They reminded me of Snape and Sirius almost here. Okay. Um, yeah, back in book five, when they were kind of, like, trying to play nice, but they just couldn't do it. Bless. Um, and Draco's, like, I can't talk to Scorpius since Astoria died. Um, I can't even talk about how losing her affected him. I try so hard, but I just can't reach out to him. And then you can't talk to Albus, Harry. I can't talk to Scorpius. And that's what this is about. It's not about my son being evil. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, because as much as you might take the word of a haughty centaur, you know the power of friendship. And Draco's all like, you know, you had these awesome friends in Weasley and Granger. And Ginny's like, well, you had Crab and Goyle. And Draco's like, really? You thought they were my friends. Oh, Lord. Yeah. All yeah. by myself. I'm just picturing Draco being a drama queen. <laughs> and then Draco's like, I was all alone because my father thought he was protecting me, but really he was cutting me off from having true friends, and then I started to hate my parents, so then I had no one. But he totally didn't hate his parents, at least not both of them. He was definitely Mama's boy. I don't. I don't blame him though. I get it. And and his dad was a douchebag, to be fair. Oh yeah. And then Draco suggests that Albus's dark cloud is pain, hatred, and loneliness. And he's like, "Don't lose the boy. You'll regret it, and so will he, because he needs you and Scorpius, whether he knows it or not." Oh my gosh, the drama with which you inflect that, I can just imagine him being like some, like twirling as he says these things. Like, you know every anime cutscene where they kind of flash to the person in different ways as they speak and say something dramatic? Yes. That's what I'm picturing. Yeah. So, um, apparently these words have affected Harry, because Ginny's like, Harry, will you get the flu powder, or shall I? And the scene ends. Yeah, because that's how you say it, isn't it? That's that's what you'd say. That's not what I would say. I would be like, let's just go now. Thank you. Yeah. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, scene 16. Yay. Hooray. Mel's getting through this. Piece by piece. Piece um, by piece. So Scorpius locates Albus, and he's like, the world's gone crazy, and we've got to fix it. And Albus is like, I know, 
Ron's gone strange, Hermione's a professor, it's all wrong, and Scorpius like, and Rose doesn't exist. Because he has the cutest crush on Rose. And he's, like, really regretting that. So they've discovered what happened is because mm-hmm. what they did taking Cedric's wand, Hermione saw them, so she became very suspicious of Durmstrang and never went to the Yule Ball with Victor. She went with Ron as friends. And while they were there, Ron met Padma Patil and they danced and they became a thing. And, um... Yeah. And Hermione somehow became, um... Sadistic. And a defense against the dark arts teacher. But Harry's life was fine. He married Ginny still and... Um, had three kids, yada, yada, yada. Yada, 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 yada. Yeah. So it's still um, turned out mostly okay. Yeah, it's, nah, it's all right, I suppose. But anyway, so they decide... To, oh, there's a whole fight over the time turner because Scorpius doesn't actually want to go back in time. Yeah, that's right. Scorpius, I'm going to go back to him. He's like, this world's good enough. If we keep messing with time, it's going to make it worse. But Albus is like, no, no, we can save everybody. And then they have this weird fight. And Scorpius is like, uh, oh, poor Albus Potter with a chip on his shoulder. Poor Albus Potter, so sad. Try my life. People look at you because your dad's famous. Harry Potter, saviour of the wizarding world. People look at me because they think my dad's Voldemort. Can't you even... Can you even slightly imagine that? No, because you've never tried. You can't see anyone but yourself. Yada, yada, yada. So he rips into Albus, and I did love it. And everyone should read that scene, because Albus is a little shit. That's true. Um, anyways, so they hear McGonagall coming, because she spotted them together on the map. I dropped something, everyone. Um, so they jump under the invisibility cloak that Albus stole from James, I think. I think that's what happened. Isn't that James's? Oh, I can't see where it says. I swear he said he took it from... Yeah, in the next page he said he stole it from James. Um, anyway, so they hide under the invisibility cloak. And McGonagall comes in, is looking for them. She's got the map, and she's looking for them, looking for them. And then she goes, unless your father's cloak. (gasps) Well, if I didn't see you, I didn't see you, and leaves. And I'm like, yeah, that's... The the wording isn't McGonagall, but the action definitely is. I agree. If you get what I mean. I agree. That was cool. Um... They have a hug because Albus says he's sorry about um, Scorpius's mum. They don't really talk about it, but he's sorry that he lost her. And then he's all like, and I don't believe you're Voldemort's kid because Voldemort isn't capable of having a kind son like you. And they pretty much make up, shake hands. Um, oh, no, no. Scorpius extends his hand, Albus pulls Scorpius into a hug. Aww. And Scorpius is like, oh, that's the second time you've done that. Cool. Um, Everybody's got feelings today. So, the new tactic, is somehow, this is going to work, is to humiliate Cedric to stop him winning. Um, or to stop him getting killed. Excellent. So, yeah, and that's that. I'm so excited that we've reached this point. <sighs> it was it was a long read. As people could probably tell, I wasn't that into it. Not a lot happened. Well, I'm excited to tell you that it's about to get great. <laughs> I'm not okay. kidding. I'm so psyched. So I'm only going to give you uh, four scenes for this upcoming week. To read just to twenty. So seventeen to twenty. Yeah. Is that is that that's not four? Yes, that is seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay. You mean inclusive of twenty? Yes, in, yes inclusive, inclusive. Yeah, and, that's um, four. 
That's... Good math, Jess. Good math. Oh, the struggle is real today. Now, that's actually going to take you to the end of Act 2. So we're halfway through, pretty much, after this. Yay! I'm not even kidding. Woot. Uh, scene 20 is my favourite scene in the whole of the... In the whole of the Cursed Child experience. So okay. um, I'm actually super psyched. And you're going to know straight away. When you read it, you're going to know. You're going to go, oh, that's probably what she found amusing. Um, so I'm really excited for you to read that. Uh, um, I'm, I'm not into it. Not feeling the Cursed Child love. No, not really. You know, some people absolutely love it. Apparently Emma Watson thought it was fantastic. Emma Watson also got to see it live on stage. Just I, saying. I have to wonder if that does make a huge difference, maybe. If we're missing I something think just would. by reading it. I I mean, I yeah, feel I like, really, honestly, we I should really get a bunch of people together to do a table read. And a dramatic reenactment. See, let's go dramatic reenactment. I think they'll, that's more down my way. Yeah, I will is. play Harry. You will play Harry. Um, you I'll... can see me doing my dramatic hand Harry, on my forehead. I'll, I'll be, I'll be a tree. <laughs> I'll be a tree. Whomping. I'll be the whomping willow yeah. in the giant oh, squid. Sorry, I just stretch. I was about to say, does the whomping willow appear in this? I don't know. Ah, uh, come on! I just want to know if you can play the whomping willow and just throw your arms around. I don't know. I'll play it anyways. If it's in there, I'll play it. If it's not in there, I'll play it anyways. But I'm I'm so excited. It's going to be okay. great. It's going to be fun. And I hope everybody I... I hope everybody who listens is also reading along. Or if you know what's coming in scene 20, then... Oh, brace yourselves. <laughs> for happiness. It's, it's, it's going to be fine. But yeah, we're halfway through, pretty much. Can you believe it? Oh, no, we're not. Yeah. But we're... We're nearly halfway. Yeah. yeah, we're nearly... We're far enough in we're far yeah. enough in okay alright well there's so, not to discuss I have to admit those scenes are kind of pretty straightforward but what did you think of the uh, Hermione yeah. twist I don't yeah. know why they made her so sadistic like would that really make Hermione of all people so bitter no I don't think so Hermione's I, not like that yeah I, I felt like that was kind of weird I don't feel like Hermione is that kind of lady. Look, uh, I'm going to be totally honest. I really wasn't into it. I'm just happy to move on. I don't have any predictions apart from that the boys are going to mess with time again. Oh, do you think so? What makes you think that? Oh, 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 oh. oh I wonder. It is oh. so hard to guess. I have to admit, I hate the use of time travel as a plot. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> Bug me, take the wheel. Alright, we're ending it here before you can be ridiculous. Get it? Bogarts, Harry Potter, ridiculous. Um, yep. But before <laughs> we end, I have yeah, to acknowledge thing. Kim's email. Kim is from New Zealand, uh, one of our listeners, and she's the one who explained it to me. She goes, um, You're not as PG as other podcasts, and there are young Harry Potter fans in the house, so yours it has to be earbuds only. Oh, bless. We're, we're we're sorry not we're, we're sorry not sorry. We Jess Jess works with kids. I stay away from kids. I am not child friendly. Having said that, I'm an amazing godmother. But overall, I've had to work hard to teach myself really to sugar instead of anything else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and I think it's great to be able to talk about Harry Potter in a more adult context. So it we is. hope people enjoy us for that. Like we're sorry your kids can't listen. We are adorable and awesome, and I'm sure your kids would love us. It's just our show, no, isn't kid-friendly. We're going to be talking about Voldemort sperm banks. You you started that one. I may have started it, but it doesn't mean you need to carry on my good work. Like, please. <laughs> um, and actually, Kim mentioned it. She goes, as for your Voldy sperm bank theory, I have to say, Voldy reproduction in general is not a topic I wanted to spend any time thinking about. I would bow to your superior Harry Potter knowledge, but I didn't think wizards had electricity or mostly no refrigeration. I wondered how a lab could function. I suppose a wizard could infiltrate a muggle sperm bank. 
but mostly your discussion got me thinking about magical contraception in general. Do you have to be an expert potion make master to mix the right brew? Can't imagine Snape having a health education class on contraception potions. Yeah. There is actually a YouTube a video. video about Snape giving sex ed. So I encourage you all to go watch that video. And please. if you don't find it, it will definitely come up when we do a which weekly episode about this very topic. <laughs> oh, it absolutely will. All right, well, I guess we better let the people get back to their daily life filled with conversations that aren't about weird things. We pick weird things. We are weird people. Yeah, that's true. Right. So, um, I'm going to be honest, there is a slight reduction in social media, mostly because I'm too lazy to keep up with it. So the ones we're actually active on is Facebook, which weekly podcast, um, Tumblr gets up updated with our episodes and I will try to post more on there. That's also Witch Weekly Podcast. Pinterest, Witch Weekly Cast. Twitter, Witch Weekly Cast. And of course email witchweeklypodcast at gmail.com. And if you want please, to send me a carrier pigeon No, I'm kidding. <laughs> please don't. I'm a little afraid of pigeons. Send her an owl. No, I'm afraid of owls. Me and Timmy both. <laughs> Poor Timmy. Uh, what's he being chased by? Owls and chickens. Yeah, owls and chickens and anything else that can run or hobble or fly. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll definitely be adding more to the list when we return to our usual Witch Weekly episodes. <laughs> but anyways, lovely people, please return to your daily lives thoroughly traumatised and we will catch you next time. Bye, nerds.